Dr. Walker, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Connection. Our topic is adult ADHD, something we hear about a lot with children. We often mm. hear uh, ADHD, ad attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, uh, as it relates to children, but it also occurs in adults. Let's get a definition. What is ADHD? Yeah, uh, attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorder is a very common, highly heritable and environmentally influenced brain function disorder that affects the multiple aspects of the lives of children, adolescents and adults. Uh, it affects not only their school and job performance, but it has negative impacts on their relationships with other people as well as their self-esteem. Give us some of the signs and symptoms of ADHD. What are we looking for? Okay. In ADHD, you have two different domains of deficits, and people with, AD, with problems with ADHD can have problems in uh, one or both domains. One of those domains involves attention. The other domain involves self-control. <clears throat> the kinds of symptoms that you see in people that have problems with attention is that they have difficulty with mental focus, they have difficulty getting tasks done, they have a tendency to try to start multiple tasks at a time and don't get anything finished, they don't follow directions very well, they don't seem to be listening sometimes when they're being spoken to, and they tend to have general disorganization issues in terms of organizing their time and effort efficiently. Uh, in the uh, self-control domain, what we see is people that have a tendency to want to squirm and fidget a great deal. They have trouble sitting still. Uh, in children, of course, they leave their seat inappropriate in the classroom. Uh, but with adults, perhaps they stay seated, but they have to tap their pencil. They have to uh, doodle on a piece of paper. They have to tap their feet. They have a lot of this excessive motor behavior, and they find internally that they feel very restless. So it's difficult for them to sit through long meetings or uh, through uh, classroom sessions. With respect to attention, when is it, when, where do we draw the line from a bit easily distracted to you have a real deficit? Yeah, <clears throat> well, you sort of make the point by inference the fact that we all have variation in our attention from time to time, situation to time. We're not always, all of us, on the top of our game in terms of our attention and our focus. We may be distracted by things that are going on elsewhere in our lives or you know, from a phone call that we took two minutes earlier or whatever. Or just so, simply too much to do. Simply too much to do. Um, so what we're ta really talking about in terms of a clinically significant uh, disorder is when a person has a number of key cardinal symptoms and these uh, symptoms have been persistent over time. Um, and key in this particular diagnosis is, is that this is a neurodevelopmental disorder. So adults don't suddenly get ADHD at age 18 or 25. If you have ADHD, you've had it since you were a child. And your first uh, symptoms appeared before the age of six. ADHD, these two domains, how do they affect someone's day-to-day -day life, their job, their relationships with friends and family? Yeah, so uh, obviously uh, from just the description, as you might guess, their job performance can really suffer. Uh, they have difficulty in terms of getting their work done. They have uh, problems in terms of starting on one thing and they start something else before they finish the first thing. And they get a lot of things going and they maybe don't get anything completed. They may make careless mistakes. They don't pay attention to detail. They fail to follow directions precisely because they weren't paying attention when the directions were given to them. Um, they uh, end up not getting good job performances because of this. They also tend to be very inefficient at work. They don't tend to have an organized way in which they approach their day and get their to-do list done. They may not even have a to-do list. Um, so in this particular way, this limits their opportunities for advancement in work and sometimes causes them to lose jobs. Many of these people uh, actually, if it weren't for this disorder, might be uh, have a much higher income and be functioning at a more responsible job. But they really can't handle the greater responsibilities. They're easily overwhelmed by complex and multiple task demands. 
How about interpersonally, at home, friends, yeah. family, outside of the workplace? Yeah. Well, obviously, first of all, the spillover from problems at job often come home. And so if people are losing their job or being laid off from one job or having to change jobs uh, and there's that disruption of income, that creates stress within families. But also these same behaviors translate in home. So they don't follow through on things. They make promises and they don't keep them because they forget. They um, forget birthdays, anniversaries, and other kinds of important events. They don't show up for things that, they're, that they said they were going to do. They uh, make rash decisions if they have uh, significant impulsivity problems. So they may, um, they may spend money that they shouldn't spend at times on impulse or make other kinds of uh, untoward decisions just based on doing it on the spur of the moment without really thinking things through. They, they fail many times to uh, stop long enough to really analyze what are the consequences of their behavior. And so they tend to go very much in the spur of the moment. It's not a matter of intelligence. It's not a reflection of someone's intelligence. Leonardo da Vinci famously never finished anything. Perhaps mm -hmm. he was ADHD. Is that correct? Oh, it absolutely has nothing to do with intelligence, although unfortunately, particularly, for example, with school children, uh, sometimes their ADHD goes unrecognized, and sometimes they're mislabeled as being perhaps just unruly, disruptive, ir you know, disrespectful students, or uh, lazy students, or uh, in the or someone who is not you know, intellectually up to the par of the other students in the class when in fact intelligence has nothing to do with it. So uh, there are people that actually do go through uh, school to whatever level they finally make it uh, and don't get diagnosed with ADHD. Although I will say as time has gone on and there's more uh, recognition of this problem among educators and others, ADHD is probably being diagnosed much more now than it was in the past. This segment is called adult ADHD. Does ADHD mm -hmm. develop in, adult, in adults? Is it adult onset or is it such a thing? Or is yeah. it something, as you mentioned earlier, that we started our, our childhood with? Yeah, it's not adult onset. If it's ADHD, then it had an onset in childhood before the age of six. Now, some adults present themselves for evaluation uh, for ADHD or their doctors refer them for, to, you know, for an evaluation for ADHD because they have some of the symptoms of ADHD. But there are a lot of other conditions that can cause that. So if these problems haven't existed earlier in life and they've had a later onset, then we start looking for other kinds of reasons. And there are many of those that can be out there. In your practice, what are the most common tests that you use to diagnose or rule out ADHD? Okay, ADHD is actually conceptualized as a dysfunction in something called executive functions, which is a uh, core system of functions mediated by the frontal lobe of the brain, but actually involve a distributed network uh, throughout the brain. Mm -hmm. And executive functions have everything to do with the control of attention, but also self-monitoring, self-regulation, uh, working memory, uh, in inhibitory control of unwanted or undesired behaviors and responses, uh, as well as the ability to appreciate the consequences of actions and be able to make plans and to anticipate uh, the future. So the types of testing that we do test not only attention, but it tests these other fr uh, frontal lobe mediated um, abilities uh, such as impulse control, uh, impulsivity, and that sort of thing. A classic test is a test where the paradigm is called a go, no-go test, where people may be presented a series of stimuli, often visual stimuli, in which there's a button that they press as soon as the stimulus appears. So you see what their reaction time is, to see how quickly they press the button. Except there's another task demand. There are gonna be some stimuli that appear for which they are not supposed to press the button. So they have to both try to work fast, but also keep the inhibition available to not press the button when it's inappropriately pressed. 
People with ADHD have a hard time with this test, and it's kind of one of the gold standard tests in the diagnosis of ADHD. But that's only one test in a battery of tests. So we have other tests that we use to test other aspects of executive, dis executive function, you know, to measure dysfunction, and uh, in terms of impulse control, ability to sustain attention over time, and also look at attention performance uh, in different, t with different types of uh, sensory modalities, such as auditory attention versus visual attention and that sort of thing. It takes a couple of hours or a little more to do a full battery of tests. Okay. Possessed of a diagnosis, mm -hmm. what do you do to begin treating ADHD? Mm -hmm. And is the treatment different with adults and children? Yeah. Uh, many of the medications used to treat ADHD for adults and children uh, are the same. Um, adults, uh, you do, uh, first of all, of course, I don't, uh, you know, prescribe any medication. I work with the uh, patient's uh, physician, either the referring physician or whoever their, their primary care doctor is, to try to um, talk about what kind of treatment they might need. Um, from a psychologist standpoint, I have to say medication can help a great deal, but many of these people need psychotherapy too. And in that case, the type of psychotherapy they get um, involves some coaching in terms of some skill development and things like that. They need to learn organizational skills. They need to learn how to establish certain kinds of routines and uh, things like that that will help them to remain productive and organized. Uh, these are things that most of us learn, you know, as we mature and grow older. But some of these folks, their disorder has kind of gotten in the way of them being able to develop some of these things. So they may need some very basic skills in terms of um, if they're college age, they may not have good study habits at all. If they are in the workplace as an adult, they may not really know how to organize themselves in the workplace, how to, how to manage tasks, how to prioritize, how to estimate the amounts of time that it's going to take to do things and when to, when to delegate responsibility. Going back to something you said earlier in the segment of the two domains, hyperactivity, mm -hmm. and this may be more applicable to children, and where do you draw the line with respect to hyperactivity uh, between just lack of good parental discipline and a real disorder? Yeah, um, I would say that in the case of children, um, that have uh, hyperactivity, uh, good parenting is one of the most important interventions that can be done. I don't work with children myself, but we have a board certified child psychologist here, Dr. Weary, who does a lot of work with children with ADHD and he helps parents learn how to manage those behaviors. So I guess what I'm saying is when you see someone that looks like they have some poor parenting skills and they also have an out of, t out of control child, you may suspect that it's their poor parenting style that's leading to the behavior issues in the child. And that may be the case, but I will tell you that also many parents don't know how to manage children that have this disorder. And that's really why, again, it requires an assessment uh, to determine if there's actually a disorder present or if these are just you know, behavior issues uh, that can be corrected with behavioral intervention. All right. With respect now back to adults, do you discover in your practice that, that those that think they might have adult ADHD often have a completely different health issue? And if so, what are common examples of those health issues? Yeah. You know, adults lead really complex lives. And in many cases, there are a lot of stressors in their lives that can cause them to have symptoms that look somewhat like ADHD. They may have uh, highly stressful job situations. They may do, be doing shift work. Uh, they may have roles outside the job uh, where they are uh, providing care for someone in their family that has a great deal of medical or other kinds of needs. Uh, they may have just many, many things on their plate. They may be involved in relationships that are dysfunctional or somewhat toxic. Um, and they may have a mood disorder. They may, have, they may suffer from depression. They may have uh, anxiety. Uh, they also may have some substance issues, anything from overusing caffeine to actually having difficulties with alcohol or other kinds of substances. Another problem is that they may have a sleep disorder and so, uh, or else they may have sleep deprivation due to the scheduling things that I mentioned. Um, I saw a patient not too long ago that um, 
had all the classic complaints of ADHD and she filled out an ADHD, an ADHD self-report checklist and you would have thought that she definitely had ADHD. But guess what, on her testing, she did not show to have ADHD. Um, on my first interview with her, we sort of passed over whether, but, you know, the fact that uh, her, she basically indicated her sleep was okay. But when we went back and went through things on the basis of the fact she had uh, test results that did not confirm ADHD, then she began to say, well, you know, it really is true though with my sleep, I guess it's not that good. Uh, I've been told I snore a great deal. I'm, I um, toss the bed covers around at night. I'm very restless, that sort of thing. She had a lot of classic symptoms of sleep apnea. And so uh, we got her seen in the sleep uh, medicine clinic and sure enough she had very significant sleep apnea. I haven't seen her back yet but I predict that her attention problems and her difficulties at work are going to be much improved once she's getting some actual uh, restful and effective sleep. And I have had patients with sleep apnea in the past where I have gotten them back and tested them and by the way they're, they do great uh, once they get their sleep problems under control. All right. So this kind of segues into our final question. How often do you work with someone's family physician or some other medical uh, specialty to get them the treatment they need if it's an ADHD diagnosis or if it's something else? Yeah, so if, the, uh, if it's ADHD, uh, again, as I mentioned, medication can definitely help in most cases. And so their primary care doctor or, or their referring physician is the one that would need to prescribe that. You know, you can have some of these other problems that I mentioned, though, and have ADHD, too. So you have some very complicated patients, and so they may actually have uh, depression, anxiety, and ADHD. Uh, for someone that, that, that is that complicated, usually the best thing to do is have them referred to an adult psychiatrist who can uh, carefully treat all their problems uh, in, a, uh, in a balanced way. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, if they wish to come back for some psychotherapy, if it looks like that their problems are such that I can help them uh, some with learning new skills, learning how to self-manage a little bit better, how to organize themselves, then actually a handful of sessions of working with them can make a big difference in that regard. So it's very much a partnership between the uh, neuropsychologist and the physician that's treating the person to try to get them functioning much better in life and uh, hopefully get them to a um, better level in terms of their relationships with others and job performance and the other things that are important to them. All right, doctor, very well. Thank you. I learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you for having me.